insight about the five and seven year and what happened that it's backed off now and you think we're okay for at least a while? Well, Joe, first of all, I want you to put your seatbelt on because we move pretty fast in this show. You know, I know you're a little used to getting up earlier <laughs> and going to bed or being on the golf course about now. So hang on. Look, in terms of what happened last week, yeah, the five and seven year auction, guess what happened there? Nobody showed up. So that meant that the direct dealers had to buy a lot of the offering there. That's their agreement with the Fed, with the government. So they did that. So you saw that scare go through the market, and that's when the 10-year the, uh, actually approached 1.60, going above it very slightly. So a massive sell-off in bonds. Like a bad IPO where the investment bankers got to buy the stock that doesn't go to, to customers, that's what happened this time, and guess what? Then they ease it out into the market. Everything's okay. So we're okay now. But going forward, you're going to have another auction coming up in a week. Same thing. We'll see what happens. This time it'll be the 20-year, and or the 30-year, rather. And we'll see how the market takes that. Don't forget, we've got to fund Biden's $1.9 trillion COVID relief plan, assuming that gets through the Senate, and I believe it will. And then you'll have the inflation numbers that are coming out. So we're not out of the woods. Here's how I play it. Keep some cash. The market's going to be volatile. It's going to trade along with bonds. I don't care that rates go up. I care the speed in which they rise. I think we've got that under control now. But still, there'll be opportunities. I still like growth. Nothing changed. Nothing, nothing changed in the long term. We're going to still see GDP going out a year over 7%. So, look, I think it's a great environment for investing right now. All right. So that was you moving fast? That, that, uh, like, like you warm? Okay. All right. Shannon, uh, you say everyone needs to take a step back. This is a return to normal. This, this is a re okay. This is a return to normalcy. Uh, not to worry. Yeah, yeah I think if we look, go back, I, I don't to think we're anything's been about normal. It. Shannon, sorry. Go ahead, Shannon. OK, <laughs> I was just going to say, I don't think anything has been um, more clear over the last couple of months is that this is exactly what we were looking for when the yield curve was inverting. And we were talking about entering a Japan like deflationary spiral. If you had told everybody in the market at this point that we'd be looking out over the course of the next year and we'd have a return to cyclicals, we'd have a return to small cap, we'd have a return to inflation. All of these things, and most importantly, to economic growth that has been fueled by massive stimulus, we should be happy. I understand that, the, that investors were concerned about the pace last week, and Steve talked a little bit about the technical aspect of the auctions and, and how that affected what was happening on the yield curve. But I think if we look forward over the next year and a half or so, as you're looking to, to put your portfolio together, this is an excellent opportunity to balance the, the, the reflationary rebound that we're seeing in the next couple of quarters with companies that you want to own over the long term. We're not just in this rebound to the consumer. We're, not, we're in a longer term manufacturing rebound. We're in a return to normalcy in many parts of the environment, many parts of the economy. So you don't need to take binary risks on travel, cruise lines, for instance. You can actually sort of ease into the fact that we're entering back into a more normal environment, both from a rate perspective and inflation perspective um, and the overall economy. And I think investors need to take a step back, take a deep breath and think about positioning for the next three or four quarters and not the next 30 to 40 days where we're going to get a bunch of these good news is bad news as it relates to the Fed scares. Hey, Joe. Uh Good to see you. And you figure this may not last, but low quality is being rewarded. And you've got a signal for when that stops, and it has to do with, with crude. Can you explain that? Yeah, for sure. Uh, crude oil is bumping up against resistance at the $65 level. That's where the April of 2019 high is. That's where the October of 2019 high is when we had the attack on the Saudi oil institution. So, Joe, you are correct. This has been all about weak balance sheets, significantly outperforming strong balance sheets, S&P 500 companies. There's a gap of 10 percentage points. That's the biggest outperformance we've seen since 2009. So when does it shift back towards quality being favored? The critical indicator for me is going to be crude oil. You had a lot of 
uh, investors anticipating a shift in momentum funds, which would be buying energy, buying financials, and selling uh, holdings of technology and consumer discretionary. I think that's coming kind of towards the end. Um, so oil, to me, is the critical indicator. And one last point, Joe. Listen, let's not dismiss something that happened in the last 72 hours that is really powering this market higher. I know it's the J&J &J vaccine that's grabbing the headlines, but did anyone think that President Biden was going to be able to get close to $1.9 trillion for his fiscal spending? The estimates from the investment banking community were $700, $800 billion at best, $1.9 trillion or very close to that. You know what? I think the market needs to begin to price in the next spending bill, which will be an infrastructure bill, and that'll be a trillion and a half to $2 trillion. That's not priced into the market.